Tomorrow at 10.30 a.m., President Obama and the First Lady will host the White House Conference on Bullying Prevention. It will air live on the White House's website. And one person who should watch, if you believe Sarah Palin, is two-time Emmy winner comedian Kathy Griffin. Now, rumors are that Kathy Griffin is going to play a Sarah Palin a Tea Party type on Glee. Uh, what do you make of that? Uh, she hasn't been kind to you or your family. Uh, what do you think? You know, Kathy Griffin can do anything to me or say anything about me because, you know, she's kind of this, she's a 50-year-old adult bully, really is what she is, kind of a has-been comedian, and, and she could do those things to me. I would just uh, ask, you know, for respect to my children, as, as she had stated on CNN that her New Year's resolution was to destroy my 16-year-old daughter. That takes it a little bit too far. Kathy, pick on me. Come up to Alaska and pick on me, but leave my kids alone. Joining me now, the star of the Broadway show, Kathy Griffin wants, to be, wants a Tony, premiering Friday, 50-year-old bully, Kathy Griffin. Thanks for joining us tonight. How do you do, Lawrence? It's my uh, pleasure. Hey, this 50-year-old thing. Well, that's, that part's that's, true. Uh, I'm afraid that part is oh, true. But that's cruel. I mean, how dare how she? How dare someone ever Just because ever you talk your about real it <laughs> doesn't mean she should ever talk about it. Are you accusing her of being a bully? Because um, that word is really bandaged about before, at many dinner tables now. Before we get into the fun yes. of being Kathy Griffin and ha being, and in, a, being in a fight with the entire Palin family. A blast. The, 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 the problem of bullying in this country that the mm -hmm. president's going to address tomorrow, which, which Sarah Palin doesn't take seriously in any way and, and is perfectly happy to you know to just have uh, other people take the serious burden of talking to this country about well, the and serious in her book things on Rogue that actually us. describes how she kind of has a disdain for equality and of course I work a lot with the LGBT community and gotten it's so grateful we've gotten lifetime achievement awards for the Trevor Project and all this these great organizations who do real work with bullying and of course when I do that work that's a very serious thing. So it's very different from a comedian telling jokes. What is it? What is it that the people like Sarah Palin don't get about bullying? Uh, the real, the real dangerous bullying that's out there for adolescent gay kids and what they come up against in their lives. Well, I think there's this kind of wave right now of self righteousness, and it seems like just any basement blogger to anybody running for an office, whether they lose. I believe she now is she the governor or has she been the governor? She used to be. So she's the calling me has been comedian. I would say she has been, has been the governor. Has been. I'm governor. just saying right. that part. Have you back. ever quit halfway through a show? <laughs> no, uh, I have you not. Done that. I would okay. not feel right about that yeah. because people pay their hard-earned money to right. come see me and buy a ticket to. And you kind of promised them ahead of time, I'm going to do a whole show. I tell them they know <laughs> I'm going to do a full show. Yeah. They know I will curse and be somewhat offensive, and I hope to make them laugh. But no, I mean the topic of real bullying is obviously a very different. And when I when we talk about the Rutgers case, the um, you know obviously other cases like that, mm -hmm. it's just a completely different animal. And so if you don't know the difference between a joke and re real bullying, then are you going to call the ghost of Johnny Carson a bully? Are you going to call the entire cast of SNL a bully? The late night host? I mean, that's what comedians do. We make jokes about people, places, and things. Yeah, and the, the so the sense of humor thing is is Sarah a little, one, one of Sarah's big on weaknesses is the whole sense of humor <laughs> thing. But yeah. you are now in a fight with her 16-year-old daughter. How did that happen? Well, um, this network reported as it was a media then it must storm. be true. <laughs> Just <laughs> so when when her daughter Willow posted posted on her Facebook wall and I didn't I don't follow her on Facebook I'm not on Facebook but when I saw on all the you know news coverage about the daughter using the F word the pejorative for gay people and I don't mean the fun four letter F word that there I use. There it is up on our screen right now that's what Willow posted? Yeah. Okay. So here's the deal. I think, you know, when you're 16, you know you're not supposed to use that word. And that is, that's a word that you really do kind of tie in with bullying, especially in the LGBT community. A community I think that she doesn't care about, you know. But um, that's completely obvious to me that that is very, very different. Because you can see if you look at that posting, that's not a joke, you know. And so what I say is very clearly a joke. And it's always a joke. And I'm on stage and I'm at a comedy club or at the Belasco Theater, but I have a microphone and it's all jokes. And 
You've just come from Wisconsin. I did my last special there. It was, yeah, just truly, I taped my last special in Milwaukee, in the hub of all the protesting. Well, it's Madison, but, you know, I was in the middle of taping the special. Did you just go there because there was a crowd? Like, I know, you you heard there's a big crowd. I would have gone for paparazzi, but not a crowd. Please, I have integrity, or at least I mean to get there soon. Uh, No, I was just taping my special there because it's actually a great comedy town, and I'm a Midwesterner, too. I just happen to be a member of two unions as well, but in the middle of the show, I just sort of stopped for a second, and I said, I want to applaud all of you that are in Madison protesting and support those of you who do and I don't mean to get too political but I'm in two unions myself and of course you guys know they're essential and then I stopped thinking that they would just be like okay where's the next joke and the whole audience stood up and just applauded and this wasn't an audience of protesters in Madison this was just a theater audience for two shows in Milwaukee so now um, Newt Gingrich made some news talking about the difficulty the strain of being you know sexually exclusive within marriage. It's, sure. it's never been easy for him. Uh, listen, <laughs> listen to what he had to say to the Christian Broadcasting Network. Okay. There's no question that at times in my life, uh, partially driven by, by how passionately I felt about this country, uh, that I worked far too hard and that things happened in my life that were not appropriate. Now you feel I heard passionately. That was all under the cloak of the passion of the yeah, country. By you the way. feel passionately about this country. <laughs> yes. you, you work far too hard on occasion. Well, first of all, has that driven you to anything that you regret that you would like to unburden yourself with here on MSNBC? Any unburdening I will be doing will, of course, be in my Broadway show, Kathy Griffin Wants a Tony, <sighs> opening Friday. However, can what I? Th- that's here in That New would York. be at the Velasco Theater yeah. on Broadway, where and all the has been. It's not running It's running for. It's only running for ten shows yeah. in eight days. But can I personally thank Sarah Palin? Because I did have to add two more shows because of her comments. And I really want to thank her because I appreciate it. And I promise to go in depth in the shows. And it's, it's, that's what I consider doing the Lord's work. Is how Sarah many, Palin driving many, more people uh, to my live shows? How many seats are you holding for the Palin family? All, um, there's always uh, at least four. Okay. Or they can have the whole row. You know, but what was so funny is when she said that soundbite about, come to Alaska, come on, Kathy. <laughs> you know that I did a whole episode of My Life on the D-List in Wasilla, went to her house, knocked on the door, and left a note inviting her to my show in Anchorage. So that's how, that's how um, studied her staff, Rebecca Mansour, whoever writes her stuff for her. That's, they didn't have, even, like, wiki me. I you've mean, tried on. to reach out. You've done everything you can. Kathy Griffin, the show is <laughs> Kathy Griffin Wants a Tony. Tickets are on sale at a variety of venues, including, of course, on KathyGriffin.com. Thanks for joining us, Kathy. <laughs>